Hello everyone. This video is going to talk about uh, using the cone calorimeter, what it's used for, how we use it in, in, a, in a, let's call it a fire science lab. Now the cone calorimeter exists in, in most fire science labs, or a lot of fire science labs, let's say. And the way it works is, let me switch this to pen mode, we, we take a square we take a square uh, 10 centimeter sample and we put it under an electric cone. In other words, we have a, this cone formed by a wound, a, a wound uh, steel wire. I think it's steel or iron or copper. I don't remember what the metal is, to tell you the truth. But it's wound around here. And so you have this uh, cone along the sides and it heats up and creates an incident heat flux on your square sample that sits here. And then you can either let it auto ignite or you can let it uh or you can use a spark igniter to ignite it. It's it's held one cent one one inch twenty five millimeters below the bottom of the cone. And the cone shape is supposed to generate a nearly uniform uh incident heat flux across the surface. So it, it's a good way to test. And so this this particular apparatus is kind of described in ASTM 1354 if you want a, uh, a standard to go with it. It does test samples with excess air and measures heat release rate using the oxygen consumption uh, method. So you're, you're looking at how much oxygen is gone in your, your flue duct as it comes up through here. You pull a, a sample gas out. And we also have our sample on a load cell. We have a load cell here. This is our fume hood. There's sometimes a, a cover that goes on to help keep gas from uh, any excess combustion products from escaping. We have a pump here that drives or th that pulls our sample gas out. If you don't want to, the standard cone calorimeter uses a pump. You can also use this theory. You either want to know how much air is being pulled up through. Uh, up through the, the the exhaust duct or how much air you're pushing past the sample. If you know how much air is coming in or you know how much air is going out, you can do the analysis either way. But uh, what else was I going to say about this? So we have this electric coil. It goes up to a, a thousand degrees Celsius and we can generate up to a hundred kilowatts per meter squared incident heat flux on the on the sample surface. Uh, to put that in perspective, uh, the sun generates about one kilowatt per meter squared and paper auto ignites uh, at around 20 kilowatts per meter squared. So you can get quite a significant amount of heat flux coming off of the cone and if it's in a small lab the room gets quite warm if, uh, if you've ever run cone tests. You can have the sample in a vertical or a horizontal configuration so you can take this whole cone assembly and turn it 90 degrees sideways and do vertical tests if you would like. And usually you're measuring uh, mass loss, CO, uh, CO generation, CO2 generation, soot. You have, there's a laser that shines through this flue here and you measure the obscuration coming through the duct to get uh, your, how much soot is being generated by the by the uh, burning sample and a lot of times you'll get other gases uh, if you're interested in let's say uh, you know other gases that come off I'm trying to think of one but I can't hydrogen cyanide maybe if you're if you're burning um, PVC or something like that and um, yeah so that's the cone mass loss I already mentioned this is a load cell anyway Okay, I hope you found this useful and have a good day.